In today's coding exercise, I have a little bit of a different kind of exercise than normal. Usually, the point of the exercise is to build out some type of algorithm and then test it to make sure it works. Now, here what I want to do is I want to focus on how we can process large amounts of information. And I already created the implementation, but there is one little bug with this implementation, and that is that whenever it gets past too large amount of data, it will not work. Now, this doesn't seem like it'd be a big deal, but we have a method here called big data parser. It takes in a number as an argument, and then it creates a range from one to whatever number is passed in, and then it maps over the collection, and it returns a, another collection, which is going to be the, the whatever the first number is, second number, all of those, uh, and each one of those squared. So it's going to take i, then it's going to square it, then it's going to take the first one will be 1, then 2, then 3, all the way up until the end of num. And what I want it to do is to return the first five items. Now, this is something that you'll need to implement in a number of real world scenarios whenever you're working with large amounts of data and you're performing processes on them. There are many times where you want to create a script and then simply grab the first few elements or you only want it to process on the first few even if you have to deal with a large number. Imagine having to create a script that goes through a million posts or something like that in a database and you want to be able to shrink it down and you run scripts on only certain parts of data. The more you get into machine learning you'll also see this process comes in very handy. Now the problem with this is that it seems like it works. So if I do big data parser and I pass in 10, if I run this everything here is going to work now you can see that it took a few seconds to process, but eventually it did give us the values. And as you can see, these are even the values for the test. But now watch what happens if I come and I'm going to copy each one of these values. And now if I come here, I'll clear out the result data. And let's say that instead of this 10, let's say that we do way more than that. So I'm not even sure exactly what this number is. It's 101 trillion or quadrillion or something like that. It's a very large number. Now, running a process such as grabbing the square of each value going up to this point would probably take a few years, possibly even the uh, entire length of human existence. It's a pretty slow process, and I implemented that on purpose. Now, we don't expect to receive the full set of values. That's not within the realm of possibility, but all my algorithm wants to do is receive the first five, which you would think that this would work. You would think that this would run through and it would grab the first five elements exactly like we have in our test. But unfortunately, if we try to run this, you're gonna see some uh, troubling data and that is that our program is gonna break. You can see that it is running down at the bottom. It's trying to process and in, I have it set my settings set so at about, I believe, 12 seconds, it's going to time out. And exactly, that's exactly what happened. We have a timeout error after 12 seconds. Now, I like, quit out of the program, start it back up again, and let's see what the problem is. So what we have here is the number, our gigantic number of 101 quadrillion or whatever that number is, what we're doing is we're mapping over it and we're trying to get the exponent. We're only trying to get the exponents though for, or the, I should say, we're trying to get the square values only for the first five elements, which doesn't seem like it would take that long. But the problem comes down to how map works inside of Ruby. And this is the real point on why I wanted to create this exercise is to reveal what map is actually doing. So what we have here is a range and then we're calling map on the range and everything that happens inside of this block 
is trying where it's all trying to occur so first we create a range then from that point we're calling map which is going to create the square and then we're calling for the first five the problem with this approach though is that everything that happens before we call first five is going to be run before it gets to this point. So Ruby doesn't even know that we only want the first five elements. So there are a few ways we could get around it. We could cheat and just change the number so that it would only grab the first five elements of the number, but that is kind of going, uh, that's not really in the spirit of the exercise. What I wanna walk through is something much more important and it's something that you can implement in your own applications. And that is how Ruby has implemented a lazy operator. So by default, the map method is what is called eager. And by eager, I mean that as soon as you call it, it is going to run, which means that if we send in 101 quadrillion items, it's going to try to process all 101 quadrillion items, even if we only wanted five. But what we can do is we can actually use a method called lazy and call this on the range, so on this enumerator, and then from there we can pass that to map. And what this does is it changes the control flow of the application. So when we don't have lazy in there, the control flow is completely based on how map wants to operate, which is the eager approach. Now, when we change and put lazy here, the control gets shifted, and now everything is going to be based off the fact that we're only asking for the first five. So this is going to completely change the process. We could pass in 10 times 101 quadrillion, and it's not going to take any more time than if we just passed in five. So let's test this out. If I run this code now, this is going to process, and as you can see, just within a couple seconds, it processed it, it gave us all the values we're looking for, and it did not time out. So I'm going to clear this off. Let's come down, delete our test data, and now let's run the actual test. So I'm going to open up a terminal window, run RSpec, and this is for February the 1st. Run this it gets processed, one example, zero failures. So that is how you can leverage the lazy enumerable method in order to make some processes that usually would time out or take too long and make them more efficient.